you know, this, this has some kind of common trading rules here, right, in that we have three moving averages. So, and those three EMAs need to be stacked and all sloping in the same direction, right? So that, that's somewhat common. And then the final trigger, you know, for the, uh, the trade setup is when price, you know, breaks above the uh, super trend indicator. Assuming that, you know, all the EMAs, you know, are, are stacked, you know, appropriately, right? The faster above the medium and the medium above the slower, right? And then all EMAs are sloping up. Then we're looking for the market, right? To cross above, uh, you know, a primary indicator. So in this case, it would be the super trend. And I don't think I set my super trend to a 10 period. So let me just go in and check that real quick. All right. Yeah, so there we go. Let's set that to 10 there. All right. So I already have all the indicators on my chart. Um, save us a little bit of time. So let's go ahead and start building. I'll move that over there so it doesn't get covered up as much. So. All right, so let's see. I, you know, I already have Bloodhound on the chart here, so we'll just use the um, empty template button up on the top to get Bloodhound open. And first thing you want to do is put a file name in there. All right. So let me hit the Save As button, and let's put in today's workshop date. All right, so there we go, the thirteenth. Okay. Now we can start working. So I'm going to start working on the logic tab here to bring up the logic board. And we'll hit the new button. And let's see, what should we call this? Um, all right. So I have the AMA Super Trend M11 uh, crossover, right, with EMA filters there. Okay. Um, so let's. Let's do the, the primary, you know, trade trigger, which is whenever uh, price crosses the uh, super trend, M11 there. All right. So let's grab ourselves a crossover solver. All right. So another term for, you know, a break you know, a break above or a break below, you know, is a crossover. So let's connect that in there. All right, so there we go. So we were looking for the closing price, right, of the bar to cross over the Emma Super Trend M11. All right, so input A is going to be the closing price of the bar. All right, so we're going to change the type here to price. There we go. And so the close of the bar, right, is the default price. So we're just going to leave the closing price there. And for input B, we just need to switch this over to the super trend M11. So let's open up the indicators list, right? And this, that super trend is from Lizard Indicators here, or from Lizard Trader. So let's scroll down. All right, so there's the M11, um, right? Which, you know, I never, uh, it's been too long, but, you know, there is a U11 and there's an M11. I don't remember what the, differences is between them but it is it, there is some kind of minor difference so so make sure that you do have the M11 because I you know it seems to me that the super trend U11 is more common than the M11 for whatever reason so just make sure that you have the M11 installed on your system uh, before you try and open up this bloodhound uh, file here well, actually, you know, if you don't have the M11 and you do open up this Bloodhound template, you know, Bloodhound's going to ask you 
to remap this missing indicator, right? So if you don't have the M11, you know, Bloodhound is simply just going to ask you to remap it. And, you know, you could just simply remap it to the U11 and that, you know, and everything would work out just fine. Since these two indicators are so close to each other, I think really the only primary difference is the internal formula is a little different. So I think they both have the same base period and multiplier and ATR period. So, yeah, so if you don't have the M11, you could remap it to the U11. So, all right. So anyways, um, one thing I do need to change is the base period here to 10. Right, that way I, I match the, uh, the question that was answered. And there we have it. And so um, with the super trend, you know, we're just going to leave it on the uh, stop dots as the plots that we're going to utilize here. So, all right, click OK. And there we have it. So we already have some, right, some crossovers there. So basically, right, a crossover is going to be whenever the, the trend of the super trend changes directions, right? So pretty straightforward there. Let's see if we have some other, right? There we go. There's some others right there, right? So from a downtrend to an uptrend and uptrend to a downtrend. So we're going to get all those crossovers there. All right, next, let's work on the EMAs being stacked there. And um, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna just work on the slope. So yeah, let's just make sure let's let's build the slope solvers for each of these EMAs. That's a little quicker and easier. So we're just gonna grab a slope solver. And the first one is the EMA ten. Connect that in. There we go. All right. And replace the SMA with the EMA. There's our EMA. And change the period to 10. And we're good. There we go. So remember the white line is the EMA 10. And we can see every once in a while it does give us, you know, as, as, as we get these little pullbacks on the Renko bars, right? The EMA also is, you know, very quick to respond. So we do get these one or two bar, you know, or a couple of bar, you know, uh, uh, slope direction changes on the EMA. So there we have it. All right. So now to uh, take a, a minor little shortcut, I'm gonna jump over to the solvers tab and I can select the EMA 10 slope, make a copy of it. Actually, I'm gonna make two copies of it and go in here and adjust the period for the EMAs. And, um, oh, I'm, you know what? I'm reading the super trend. Hold on a moment. Let me make a little correction here. There we go. Make that a 20 period EMA. There you go. That So our first slope solver, there we go. I just readjusted it. So it's an EMA 20 period now. All right. So there we go. We can see it says EMA 20 there. All right. So the second one, we want that to be an EMA 50. So let's adjust the period to 50. We can click OK. All right, and our third slope solver here, we want that to be in EMA 100. So I'll just adjust the name and then go in and adjust the period of the EMA. All right, there we go. So now we have an EMA 20, 50, and 100 there. And all right, yeah, I'm just double checking the 
EMA is on my chart. Make sure I didn't make that same mistake. And yeah, all right, that is an EMA 20, not a 10. So, okay, all is good. All right, so now I need to put those other two slope solvers on the board here so I can go to my solver nodes, existing nodes, right? And there's the fifth EMA 50 and EMA 100. So let's put that on the board, move that over, and then go grab the other existing node here. There's the EMA 100. So I'll move those back a little bit. So now I'm going to grab a AND node and connect all those up like so. Right, so right now we're just only looking at the slope of each of those EMAs. Right, and so whenever they're in agreement, we're going to get a short or a long output, right? So we can see here in this area, right? There's no output from Bloodhound, right? And that's simply because the EMA 20 is sloping up while the 50 and the 100 are sloping down, right? So there's a disagreement there, right? And so that's a part of the filtering here that we're, that we're doing. And we can see the same thing over here right, where the EMA 20 is sloping up while the other two EMAs are still sloping down. Although, who knows, that EMA 50 could have started sloping up just a fraction there. It's kind of hard to tell. So. All right, so there's that. Okay, so now we can work on making sure that those moving averages are, are stacked in the correct order there, right? So to do that, we're going to need a bunch of comparison solvers. Right? So in a downtrend, right, we want to make sure that the EMA 20 is below the 50 and to make sure that the 50 is below the 100. So we're going to need a couple of comparison solvers to do that. All right, so as far as the naming, we're just comparing the EMA 20 to the EMA 50 there. All right, so input A is, is going to be the EMA 20. There's the EMA. Change the period to 20. Done. All right, and input B, that will be the EMA 50. So, all right, adjust the period to the 50. And there we have it. All right, so whenever the 20 or the white line is below the 50 or the blue line, right, we have a short output. And as soon as, right, the 20, you know, uh, crosses above, goes above the 50, then we get a, a long output from Bloodhound. All right, so there we go. It's pretty straightforward. So um, let's see. Let me switch over to the Solvers tab. I'll make a copy. And I'll adjust the name. There we go. And now I just go in and adjust the period of those EMAs. There, there's, there's the 50. All right, so now input A is the EMA 50. And input B, we want the EMA 100. There we go. Okay, there we have it. So now we have our 50 period compared to the 100 period. So there's our, our other comparison solver. So let's go back to the logic tab and then go back to our existing nodes. And there is that other comparison solver. Put that on the board. And, you know, if we wanted to just test this out, we can grab another AND node, connect both of these in, and then we could just kind of compare <clears throat> or take a look to make sure everything's working correctly right so there we go so when the 
EMA 20 is below the 50 and below the 100. Here we go, we're getting a short output. And as soon as that EMA 20 right crosses above the 50, then they're not stacked in the correct order anymore. And let's go over here. Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> so we have the 20 right above the 100 and the 50, but the 50 is below the 100. So once the EMA 50 right goes into the middle, then we get a long output. So there we go. So we can see the stacking is working correctly as well. All right. So we can get rid of this AND node and connect them all in there. So now we so now the EMAs all need to be sloping in the same direction and stacked correctly as well. And so we can see right here. There we go. So they're all EMAs are sloping up. And as soon as the EMA 20 starts sloping down, right, the long output stops. So this is our filtering right here, right? This is the EMA uh, filtering going on right here. Right? And if we scroll back, yeah, here we have it. So, right, if we look at this area, well, actually, you know, again, if we focus on this area where there's no short output, right? The EMAs are stacked correctly. However, right, the EMA 20 is sloping upward, right? So that violated one of the rules and so there's no no short output there. Okay, so the last thing to do is to add in our crossover, you know, trigger there. And there we have it. So let's, let me close that out. And let's see if we actually have any signals. There we go. So there's a couple of signals. All right. So, yeah, we're definitely in a bit of a long downtrend. And then we had a, I guess what you would consider a pullback. So that, and that reversed, right, the super trend direction. And then when the downtrend resumed, you know, right, the EMAs are, are all sloping down and stacked correctly. And then the super trend flips and we get our signal. There we go. All right. And here's another one. So there we go. So there's a uh, an uptrend. Yep. An uptrend forming. And we did get a bit of a deep um, pullback. All right downward which flipped our super trend and then when the uptrend resumed right the super trend flipped again and our moving averages were still stacked correctly and sloping up and there's our long signal all right so there we have it